Now, if we're going to do this, we're going to build a decision tree initially. We'll look at the implicit one in a second. And here's the basic idea we can use. To build the tree, we can say, at the root level, we need to decide whether to include the first object or not. If we're going to include the first object, we'll take the left branch. If we're not going to include it, we'll take the right branch. It's a decision. We'll do the same thing at each level. At the nth level, we're making the same decision for the nth element. And in particular, by keeping track of what we have included so far into the knapsack to get to that branch, and what we have left to consider, we can generate a binary tree of decisions. So let's look at that. So here's code for building a decision tree, or a D-tree as we're going to call it. We've got two arguments, so far and to do. And think of those as lists of elements. So far will be, here's the list of things that I've already decided to include in the knapsack when I got to this node. To do will be the list of things I still have to consider. What will my process be here? Well, it's kind of the format you'd expect. It's a recursive kind of process. If there's nothing left to consider, right, there's nothing left to be added in, then I'm done, so I'll just return a binary tree whose value is that list of things I decided to include. Great, and by the way, those things might be objects of some sort. If I still got something to do, I'm going to do the following. Notice the nice recursive nature here. I'm going to build a decision tree where I include that next element with the set of things I'm putting into it. Remember, so far it has all the things I've included to date. I'm going to add the next element in. That will now be a new decision tree. And what I have left is everything not including that first element. Way of thinking about it is I'm going to build a decision tree including it. And I'm similarly going to build another decision tree where I don't include it. So it's just all the things up until now I've decided to include. I'm not going to include this element. And so the things left to consider are everything but that element. Having recursively built those two binary decision trees, I create a new node called here, which has a left branch and a right branch. And that new node has in it all the things I decided to include up to this point. Okay? And these two pieces just set the left and right branch. And then I just return that node. And of course, if that's the root node, I'm done. It's a nice, elegant way of building a tree. It's just going to build that nice decision tree by recursively building subtrees where I include an element or I don't include an element, and I just keep passing on. And the only thing I'm doing here is I'm passing down the information on what elements have I already committed to including at this level in the tree. With that in mind, here's how I might build a little tree. If I'm given elements A and B, I'm making a decision at each point as to whether to include them. So up here, the value is basically I've decided to include nothing so far. If I'm going to include A, I take this branch. If I'm not going to include A, I take that branch. Having done this, at this level, I'm going to make a decision on B. Here, I've already decided to include A. If I decide to include B, it's going to create a node with those two elements included. This one would say I'm not going to include B, but I've already decided to include A. And same thing over here. In fact, what this is doing is it's creating what we call a power set, or the set of all subsets of a collection of items. But I've been able to basically build a decision tree, a binary decision tree, very straightforwardly. Now, this is not going to be the most efficient way of doing it, but with that, we can now think about, so how would I search it? How would I search it to find...